Morning world, welcome to Saturday, 6th of April. is that someone down here is really unhappy bellowing and mooing and going on there doesn't seem to be anybody there bed does want to refresh but it's it's not that I wonder if somebody was having a calf because there are still a few few left to drop calves yet but it wasn't that kind of mooing it's like a I'm hungry, feed me mooing. Well, they shouldn't have run out. Not yet. I should have plenty. You've got plenty. You've got plenty. Oh, so I don't know what the racket is. What are you looking at? Nothing can get out. It might just be grass is growing. They can smell it and they want to go out. Unfortunately, it's far too wet out there and they will chew the place up and turn it into a bunch of porridge. So, morning ladies, you alright? Um, um, apart from having a mucky yard, which kind of is to be expected, I can't see anything wrong. No one's hurt, nothing's injured. Who's making all the racket then? Eh? Hands up. I don't mush. No sign. So, I won't call it a false alarm because something's obviously upset them. And I don't know what it is. Anyway, so, it's Saturday. I've got a load of work to do. Uh, we've got to refresh the bed in there, muck out in there, refresh the bed in there. I think, I think all three sheds need refreshing as far as bedding's concerned. They're okay for grub. These guys are okay for grub. It's a bit coarse, this stuff. I'm not sure if that's maybe what they're complaining about because it's kind of, well, it's not as nice as the last bill we had. It's possible. Um, the guys next door, everything's, nothing's hungry. They are whinging. You always, when you've got cattle, especially cattle, because they are quite vocal if they're not happy, um, you've always got your ear out in the case of there's different sorts of moves, and sometimes it's just talking to a calf, sometimes it's just, you know, cow's got a, a tip full of milk and she wants to draw it out and the calf's ignoring her. Sometimes it's just a moo, but occasionally, it's different, and it sounds like something's in distress, and that's what it felt like this morning, something was in distress. Mm. They're all quite happy in there. Like I say, apart from, could do with some fresh straws, Esther. Hmm. Is there something in the air? Is it something that I can't sense? Is it a change in the weather or something? I honestly, I honestly, I don't know. I mean, they've shut up now I've come down here. But the last 10 minutes, bellowing. This morning, I came down here, I looked at the cattle and said they could do with a bit of a bed refresh in there, which we're gonna do. And they could do with a bit of a bed refresh in there and a bit of a clean out in there, which we still got to do and the guys next door want some clean bedding as well, which we still got to do. And I thought I had all afternoon to do it in. There was no panic. No panic, so we'd been off to my brother's this morning, gone and had a look at his solar system over there, sat down, crunched the numbers as best we can. Mrs P likes to crunch numbers. So we're getting through just over a thousand kilowatt hours of energy 
every 28 days here. So that's running the house, running Audrey's and Holly's um, kitchen, which is, I think we're paying 27 pence a unit plus our standing charge. So, <clears throat> so that works out at roughly 270 pounds a month in energy to run this place. So it's, it's not that bad. It was more, obviously the, the electric price has come down. Um, yeah, the second of last year, it was a, a lot more than that. But then we've sat and worked out the solar system with what my brother's is producing, because what we're looking at putting in here, if we do it, is the same as he's got. And the system he's got, the six kilowatt hour, seven kilowatt hour, whatever it makes, plus the batteries, would cover at least half of our electric bill. So on, on, we're averaging here. So obviously in the summer months it will produce more, in the winter months it will produce less. So we're averaging over the year 500 kilowatt hours a month through the solar. That's nice. You can hear that. I haven't got to show it you. You know exactly what she's doing. She just got up and did that right in front of me. Lovely. So, so we're having our bill. So, if, so say for argument, say let's round it up to three hundred pounds a month of what we're paying on electric. It's not quite that much, but near as damn it, three hundred pounds a month. So, one hundred and fifty quid a month saved. Well, one hundred and fifty pounds times twelve is quite a lot. Um, so, I've got to work on that number. Uh, one hundred and fifty times twelve is fifteen hundred. £1,800 a year. Sorry, just quick maths. So £1,800 a year saving in electric. Plus, if we get any excess, it gets fed back to the grid, which we get 16 pence a unit for as well. So, so potentially £2,000 a year in electricity, either saved or generated and sent back to the grid. Does that make sense? With this system. So that's now on two thirds of our energy costs on the 7.7 .7 kilowatt system, but it, they call it 7.7, .7, I think it produces six. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so 2,000 pound a year saving on our electricity. Now we've got to say, like I was going, um, for the money we would spend to put it in, uh, it would take us four years to break even. Maybe just over four years, if it all goes to plan. Um, yeah, so you can work that backwards to roughly where we are. Uh, yeah, I think it's worth doing. Mrs. P agrees it is worth doing, but then she's saying to me, right now, with the economics of the country and the world and everything else, that amount of money that's sitting in my building society account doing nothing, it's like a bit of insurance if anything goes wrong. I'm spending my insurance. Well, I am, but I'm going to get it back. And then after four and a half years, I'm going to st it's going to start repaying way more than whatever the building society is going to give me. So, yeah, it's just crunching numbers. Right. I've got to do less talking and a bit more work. So I think what we're going to do is straw and straw needs doing, but that's not urgent. I think I'm going to get that out of there first, get the muck out of there first, um, and then chip that, and then that's clean. I can shut them back in there on a clean surface and then straw this. So when they come back through, hello, mate, um, it's, everything's clean it's going to rain later apparently it's going to chuck it down so and i'm not here later because my wife wants to go and find something or somewhere in bath and she's asked if i'll go with her to go and find this place so that's two hours this afternoon i'm going to lose all right are you going to cooperate today look at the mess you've made in here go on go on Go on, get out. Out. Mind your feet. Mind your feet. Mind your feet. Go on. 
Don't be so flippin' awkward. Move your feet. Go on. They do it on purpose. Right. They pushed all that forward, so we're gonna have to dig that out and pull it all back again. Get a bit more out of there. which is not really what I wanted to be, but you know what, I might as well get it out. Still put some more chip back on there and uh, build it back up. off. It's probably going to be about four or five loads I reckon. But we'll bring a bit of wood chip back. Maybe not the first trip back. I think the first trip back will come back empty. <coughs> the empty bucket and then we'll just push the feed barrier forward a bit. Get it back to where it's supposed to be. In the monks out lot. We went down and cut our local veterinary surgeries. Grass. Was that Thursday? So they said to you and I said, I'll chuck it on the bucky. That'll disappear. Which it will. Well then. Yeah. You need to go back in there. A bit like that. And like that. And then back to me a little bit. Like that. Chip back on the next load. It's going to be one more bucket full to come out of there and it's done because it's not worth going back. 
if I chuck it over there. Right, so I'll get this finished before lunch, including hopefully the straw the other end. And then that is one down, two to go. The other two aren't that difficult. They're literally just, there's nothing really to dig out. It's just fresh bed on top. And I can do that when I get back from uh, our little trip to Bath. So, I don't do Bath very often. It's the sort of place before I even go there. I kind of know I'm going to get lost. It's all one-way systems. And it's a case of, right, I want to go over there. But for me to get over there, I've got to go that way. Do you know what I mean? Oh my God, so my onboard compass gets a little bit, um, a little bit frazzled. So to me, this is kind of recycling at its best. This is a tree we took down for a customer in Yate yesterday. And today we're using it for the welfare of our livestock. And this time, well, no, a bit later than this, next year, that'll go out and be chucked on the land um, as compost. So not a leaf in this, not an awful lot of wood. It will be a bit acid. That's the downside, it is a bit acid, but I could always throw some lime on for that. Out you come. That should be enough for today. Let's not lose the chain, eh? <laughs> Ooh, look at that! It's green! Yeah! Okay, that was good out, wasn't it? It was bang to all four in one go. Go and have my dinner, go to the tip again. She's got a car booked in the tip again. I don't know where she gets all this rubbish from. I mean, she's having a spring clean, she's having a house clean, and she said, I found stuff from going back when the kids were little, so another trip to the tip. So, she spent half my life going to the tip. Move to you too as well.
I'd say that's happy. It looks happy. You happy? Oh yeah, she says she's happy. Right, we'll go around the back. I've got 10 minutes, take that off, put spikes on, bring a bale of straw around here, and then we are ready to do these guys when I get back. When I get back from Bath. Thank <laughs> you.